All right. So hello and welcome to the announcement of 24 in 24 Raconteur Press's insane publishing schedule for the year to come. We thought we would just do this as a live stream. Be well, actually a recording because we're not alive even remotely even here. <laughs> <Nope>. um, <laughs> we, just, we just got done filming a uh, or doing the live stream. I'm so a little frazzled. <laughs> So, well, I mean, that's kind of normal, isn't it? It is very normal. Right? Yeah. So, um, we have a huge list. See? We have a huge list. 24 anthologies in 24 to start with. Well, and don't tell Jonna to start with because she starts getting all twitchy eyed. <laughs> 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 well, I will tell you we're announcing quite a few, but we have a few that we're holding in reserve because we know, we know that somebody will come up with some sort of strange idea in the middle of the year and we need an open slot to put it in. So we've got a couple of those held out. So uh, without any further ado, this is a, a nice mix of continuation of previous series and some really fun stuff. Mm -hmm. So first up, uh, January, um, and we'll be putting the dates of open close and publication date. In January, we're doing All Will Burn Volume 2 uh, in Oh. Don't just read off there. <laughs> Don't do I ever just read off anything? <laughs> yeah, you just did on the live stream with oh. the recipe thing. Point. So um, <laughs> this this is basically it's it's our, our collaboration with Casey's L based off Casey's uh, idea. Um, it's basically what parents will do to protect their children and every everybody everybody can relate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, just right it doesn't it doesn't have to be um, storm or drang and the planet is scorched bare. It can be, you know, the umpire at Little League um, or scorched and planet bare. I'm good in the look. Okay, up um, second in January is Steampunk. You want to take that one? Okay, so S Steampunk is, um, don't just put gears on it and call it Steampunk. Or Victorian. Or Victorian, because it's not. Um, give a reason for why we're in the age of steam. Um, what fun, exciting things, you know, because, you know, we have steamships and we have the you know, steam powered. Uh, Can it be nuclear powered steam? Sure. It could. <laughs> I, honestly, one of my favorite steampunks, um, they, they discovered ether and um, very cool. Use that as a renewable resource. And, um, so everything runs on steam because they never had to develop uh, combustion engines or anything like that. So, um, you know, it, but that's steampunk. You can have anything in steampunk. You can have a romance, you can have a murder mystery, you can have any kinds of number of things with the steampunk setting. So it's a steampunk setting and let your imagination just take it and run with it and incorporate the steam into yes. your steampunk. Don't just slap a gear on it. So Yes. Um, so, one of the fun things we're doing this coming year is we had a couple of collaborations with guest editors. And our first uh, collaboration that we're coming up with is with Dr. James Young, who we adore, who has on several occasions been a stunt double for Cedar. And so today, I am <laughs> James Young's stunt double, <laughs> which is hilarious if you know both of us. <laughs> The handouts that I have, because I have two of them, um, actually point out something that we haven't touched on yet, which is story length for any and all of these should be. Oh, we're going to do that at the end. Five to eight thousand words. Okay, we're, do, we're doing that so, at the end. Okay, but reinforcing. We will reinforce yes, for the ones, and then they remember it. Yes. So, the <laughs> the first of the James Young anthologies is giant, freaky robots, robots, mecha. And so it, the, the stories have to involve some kind of, ro of, of mecha, uh, giant robots, and it's one of those things that I absolutely love the fact that I'm going to get to make a cover for a uh, mecha <laughs> anthology, but that's a whole other thing. But it, I think that there is so many ways that you can write mecha. Mm -hmm. I mean, because there's battle mecha, but there's also ways that you could use mecha that would be more geared towards exploration or say um, a rescue situation where humans couldn't go but you could go with your giant freaking robot. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> and we already have an anchor story for that one from a really cool author but we're not telling you yet. We can't tell you yet. <laughs> okay, second one in February is Pin Up Noir Volume 3 which will be the sultry brunette. So, <laughs> um, so 
So you could talk about that one. Pin up the wall. Uh, Y'all ran with the first one, run with the third one. Um, it's noir. And it can be things from noir in cyberpunk, like Steve Diamond's first. Yeah, that was um, great. 1950s noir. It can be any noir. Mm -hmm. uh, just write noir. Uh, Y'all know what it is. Write it. You've, you've already written one. We're putting two together. Write three. Okay. <laughs> Simple. And so that's February. We have Giant Freaking Robots and Pinup Noir number three. So in March, we do Space Marines 3. Space Marines 3. This is awesome. Um, the first two Space Marines had anchor stories from Maggie Hogarth. I'm working on getting the third one out of her. I have not confirmed yet, though. Um, hit, hit, Maggie. <laughs> <laughs> I, might, I may be bribing her with things. Um, but, you know, badasses in space. Uh, we had a couple of rescue missions in the last one. We had, um, you know, a one-on-one, -on -one, you know, mission onto an asteroid. We've had invasions. We've had repelling invasions. Um, we've had humans fuck yeah. Like, <laughs> which is always, oh, those are always my favorite stories where, you know, the aliens are like, um, don't mess with the humans. This is why you don't mess with the humans. No, really, don't mess with the humans. <laughs> um, those were a lot of fun. Keep sending those stories. Um, fun ones, uh, intense ones. Keep it up. Marines they're, they're great. in space. Marines in space. Yeah. Uh, there you go. Crayons not included. Yes. <laughs> Second up in March is Moggy's in Space Volume 3, which we may end up going to 4 because Cats in Space has gone completely around the bend. Um, so if you can't figure that one out, I don't know what to tell you. Cats, <laughs> space, together. So, April, we have... You again, your honor, volume two, the end of the Spurgle Chronicles. It will be number four in the series. You can talk about that. Oh, um, Andrew Spurgle rides again. Um, <laughs> we, we got so many, rides not well again. We got so <laughs> many submissions for the first Spurgle Chronicles, which was the, the courtroom, the uh, adjudication of some form uh, version. We got so many good ones that we went ahead and we posted up for a second. This will be volume two in the court one. So, what, you again? Um, it has to be something involving some sort of courtroom, adjudication, something where somebody's up there deciding who's right and who's wrong. It must include Andrew J. Spurgle or Andrew Spurgle. Um, he's got to be incompetent. Um, complete and total. Just make, <laughs> it, make him incompetent. Um, he can be the main character, he can be a walk-on, he can be a mention, as long as he's in there somewhere. Okay, second up in April is Weird West, spelled W-Y-R-D-D, Weird West. Who wants to take this one? I'll do this one. You want that one? You got that one. Uh, so our description is witches and werewolves and cowboys. Oh my! Um, <laughs> <laughs> you may have seen the, uh, the there, there was a Tumblr meme going around of cowboys are just witches with because uh, they, they have the hat they have their their magic stick they have words that they say to control the the horse and the cows and, oh. um so i'm, I'm kind of go I, i'm like that's kind of where my brain went with this um but you know which is in the old west magic in the old west monsters, um, monsters in the old west aliens you know, what happens if there's a chinese dragon running away and he he got to mexico and it's coming up through the southwest because we had we had samurai in Mexico in the 1800s, mm -hmm. and we had, there were a lot of Chinese as that labor came in force that were working on the railroad, the West Coast inwards. So yeah, where do you get a dragon? What happened when the dragon meets coyote? Oh my gosh! <laughs> you know, old uh, West and magic. You cannot, West, cannot go, go wrong. wrong. No. <laughs> yep. Okay, then that makes April first up in May. Space Cowboys five, <laughs> five. <laughs> <laughs> this this one, like the description said, this one hit a nerve with y'all, and God bless you for it. But good Lord Almighty, oh! Um, I have enjoyed these thoroughly. Space has been so much fun. Space Cowboys was. has has pretty much defined Racket to Press. Yep, it much. really has. It has. I mean, it's just it's pretty amazing. But well, you, uh, we don't need to tell you how to do this one. You've been doing. Here you go. Pal. Yeah. Space <laughs> Cowboys. Go. go. <laughs> and, and we begin stuff that's. Firefly themed and Cowboy Bebop themed. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And there's a couple that have been the strange mishmash of both, which have been interesting. Yeah, yeah. Space Cowboys, y'all just have run with this. Okay, so next up in May will be the Goblin Marketplace, which um, <laughs> I, I did a terrible thing. I poked an author with an idea when we were at Nauticon, and he was throwing things at me. <laughs> and he's writing a story for this one. He's our anchor author for this one. Mm-hmm. So, um, the, well, this one was my idea, because she she's gets to... Oh, she's kind of fabulous poem. Yes. Oh, um, yeah. She, she found one of my favorite poems to go with this. Um, but it's not... It's a... Um, Fairies in the mar- at the fairies at the farmers market was my my original thought for this. Um, so what happens when the fairies throw up a, show up at the farmers market? Um, would you make a deal with a goblin? Uh, what would they sell? What would they sell? What? Why would they be there? Would there be? Could you wander into a farmers market that's nothing but fae? Um, if you've ever been to the marketplace on Diva uh, with uh, Robert Asprin, <laughs> um, yeah, that exactly. is something you know. Something like that, like where, what kind of aliens would be there? What kind of intrigue would be going on? And, and mm-hmm. the, the great thing is you can do a human walking into a fairy run farmer's market, or you can have the poor, that poor bloody fairy walking into a human one. Mm-hmm. There Cause, is that. Because the farmers... Brown, the house brownie that does the shopping in a supermarket. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because farmers, <laughs> I'm here to tell you, can cut a deal that would make a fairy queen blush. <laughs> so what, what kind of deals would be made? Could you? What kind of treasures would you find? Um, so, you know, go shopping. Have fun. Or who's <laughs> selling things there that they shouldn't be? Oh, that too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So next up um, is, it would be at the end of May, would be Hooves, Sabres, and Tracks, which are our second one with Dr. Young. Yes. And now anything with the James Young anthologies, these all are alternate history, but they need to be uh, a logic um, alternate history. So the the stipulation is that the point of deviation has to be realistic to the technology of the time. So in Who of Sabres and Tracks, it's some aspect of mounted warfare, and it ranging anywhere from antiquity through the modern era. It doesn't say past modern era, so I'm gonna say that that's our hard camp is the technology has to be accurate up to what we do and can do now. Um, so this is the um, the alternate history and cavalry and it's going to be a lot of fun to see what people send us for this. But it has to be logical guys. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, you can go with Gatlings at Little Bighorn or Gatling guns at Alamo, but you don't go tri-barrel coil guns to Alamo. Mm-hmm. So doesn't that sound fun? Yes. Next one. This is another with a guest on, uh, uh, editor, um, Sandra Medlock, who's done some wonderful books. Um, Alien Family Values. Uh, so, want well, me to take this one? That one's yours. Oh, so. Wow, this was a fun conver- conversation. So there's a galactic war, and all of these planets have been disrupted, and there's orphans, and there's families who've lost children um, all over the, the colonized cosmos. And communities spring up and start taking in various various Found aliens to create family units. Um, they become mixed species by adopting these, these errant children from planet X. Um, and the question is, what do these families look like, and what kind of problems do they have, um, and and what gets created? Do you, you have a kid that suddenly wants to get ears that match so and so, and why don't I have tentacles, mommy? Quit <laughs> um, melting the floor. <laughs> yeah, some of these can be really uh, humorous. Some can be a little terrifying. As certain aliens grow up, it gets to be kind of a problem. Um, oh look, put on the biohazard suit and change the diaper for real. <laughs> yeah, how do you do that? Um, you have to be very clear in defining your planetary species and your your various species and how they interact. So that'll be a fun one. That's June. That's the I second one. I in June. love that we have the All Will Burn series and then this Alien Family Values. I, know. I just love these these family oriented themes that we're coming up with. Mm-hmm. So first up in July, you want to do this one? Yes, this is one of Rita's and Moggy Noir. Now, I can't do any better than the description here. So the description is, and I quote, cats, noir, spectacular tales, go. (laughs) (laughs) 
enough said about that. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't do better than that. I mean, really, I mean, go. We have the When Harry Met Sally version of this. I mean, we're, we're not the kind of place where we're going to give you so much detail in, in ordering your salad or your anthology that you can't even write. We like to leave it wide open so you guys can just run with it. Have and fun. Give, give you permission. Catch and walk. Catch and walk. They belong. And, and after we've had to deal with cats, we're going to wander off to coffee. <laughs> <laughs> because everybody needs a cup of coffee every now and then, mostly for self-defense. Um, so next up is Coffee Adventures. Do you want to take this one? Um, so this is a, a tribute um, to our lovely King Harv, who sponsors the Blanket Fort. Um, who sends us coffee. He sends us coffee he and keeps us, coffee. keeps us running. We love him very much. <laughs> um, so we would recommend, um, you know, go check out King Harv, look at um, the different blends they've got because, oh my gosh, they have some amazing blends. And he's got some really fun titles for the blends. Mm -hmm. Some really fun. The blends itself well. But yes. So um, grab some inspiration, maybe buy, buy a pound or two of coffee. And not required. Not required. You're not required to buy coffee for this. <laughs> However... Uh, go grab some inspiration from King Harv and write a story about discovering the perfect blend, the perfect the perfect coffee bean. Where did you go looking for it? Where did you find it? You know, was the it a quest? A, from a the, story the quest. involving coffee. Yes, the, You're quest for the perfect cup of coffee. This one writes itself. <laughs> or what you had to do to get to that cup of coffee. Um, and, or and what the coffee witnessed. Uh, what the, mm, mm. I love the. Was there a coffee shop on that asteroid? <laughs> <laughs> there, there are any number of places because he has the entire galaxy. Oh, by the way, the one blend that is completely off limits is Geisha, because Jim Curtis has claimed that one already. Yeah, <laughs> yes. he's writing the Geisha story. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, <laughs> I can't wait. I am so oh, excited. Oh man, for the this twinkle story. that man got in his eye <laughs> when he said, "I get Geisha." <laughs> we said, "Okay, yes, sir." Yes, <laughs> But any other blend, grab it and write about it. We want to see those stories. Yep. Yes. Mm -hmm. Next up in um, in, in um, August, because we're in August at this point. We skipped July because July is kind of a special month. We're, you're not going to hear about that one yet. Um, the Super Generation. This was an idea from Jack Wilder, where he was talking about in 1955, there was an unexplained cosmic event. Da -da. It granted a bunch of people extraordinary abilities, like yes. Superman or Super Sight or some kind of superhero. Um, it was never repeated. Uh, the abilities were not passed down to their children. They did live a normal lifespan. Um, but this means that in the not too distant future, the so-called super generation will be nothing but a note in the history books. What are their stories? You get one generation with superheroes, and that's it. Yep, and all done. Superheroes and supervillains. Yes, because who knows what those superpowers are? They can be defined in a number of different ways. Mm -hmm. So that's the frame, and you run with it. So, And then we have, beginning of September, the third, third one we're doing with Dr. James Young. It's the big ones, World War II. The short story must involve some aspect of World War II, which gives you a huge range. I mean, I'm not by any means the scholar that Dr. Young is. However, I've had a lifelong interest in World War II. Specifically, my interest generally lays with the Pacific Theater. And honestly, there are so many stories. I mean, just in that alone, just if you think about the Australian co Coast Watchers and the Japanese guy that we found however many years after the war had ended and had to talk him into um, how to um, finally give up and, and, and stop fighting the war. But again, the this is alternate history and it has to involve realistic technology to the era. Um, so if you're giving the USS Nevada rail guns at Pearl Harbor, this is the wrong anthology for you. I, I do love this one. What if the Trinity experiment ended with a click that's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah right? <laughs> yeah. So all the, the military history buffs. The nuke bomb fizzled. Yeah. Now what? Yeah. Bing. Write it. Write it. Nothing. Yes. So that is September. Um, and the second one in September is, I'll let you do this one. Again, Moggy Noir. 
because we know we're going to get so many good stories. We went, what the hell, we'll do a second volume already. Look, the description. Cats. Noir. Spectacular tale. Do it again. <laughs> <laughs> y'all, y'all have never let us down. You, you, we always get so many fantastic stories. It was a given that we'd have two on this one. Ooh. And we already have people saying that they're going to do 24 in 24 and write a story for every single one of these anthologies. Yes. <laughs> Which would be excited. a phenomenal um, achievement. Whether or not they make it into the anthologies, at the end of the year, if they have 24 short stories, they can do things with that. Mm -hmm. Okay, first of October. Yeah, I get yeah, this yeah. one. <laughs> first one of October is called The Weenie Trippin'. And we're not talking drugs. <laughs> Although you would wonder sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> if you have watched our adventures in the North Texas Troublemaker group of hashtag Racketeer Road Trip, starting with this man trying to take apart Courtney's car. <laughs> while I was driving it. While he was driving it. Along we with got there. <laughs> What's your issue? <laughs> yes. But all the things that happened to us on the way back. Gun turret. <laughs> not gun turret. Um, various various tools being taken away from it, shipped to various hotels, so you can have them combined with Motel 5.5, <laughs> not measuring up, which has turned into its own story base, but, you know, random towing, it's like, if you think about the great road trip stories of, of history, um, that's what this is about. This is about going on a buddy road trip and having the strangest and most bizarre things happen. <laughs> Um, High jinx. High jinx. Adventure. Discovery. Disassembly. What happened to our spaceship? <laughs> I want to remember where we parked. <laughs> the spaceship is gone. It's just gone. It's disappeared. What is that blood stain on? Oh, well, I'll see what I'm So these are road trip stories. Uh, road trip adventures. They can be set anywhere. They can be going across the block. You and your friend on your bicycle and the adventure you went two blocks down. Or across the universe. Or across the universe. How did we end up on this asteroid? You know, it's like, just go with it. There's a planet named Albuquerque? Why did we go left? <laughs> yes. <laughs> left Albuquerque takes you to Sheboygan. Yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, because we've had a lot of requests to have the wreck your road trip stuff put into a book. At least the first adventure. Um, I don't know about, you're getting lost in the wilds of Kentucky on the way to Imaginarium could have been one all on its own. It's like, we drove point through point a portal! Point 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 <laughs> the banjos mean portals. So. <laughs> uh, mm, Nothing I, like your little lady reaching over and hitting the lock button. Click. <laughs> <laughs> so, coming by. so that's what that one is. Um, second up in um, October, rather appropriately, is Weird West Volume 2. And because again, we know we're going to get so many good stories, we went ahead and just scheduled a second one. And it's we've, perfect. For we've October. learned. We've learned. Yeah, we have learned. So, and we're in the same thing. Um, first of November, first of November, we're doing coffee stories, part two, volume two. Yep. Because, because we know we're going to have to. Mm -hmm. So, um, and we're leaving end of November into December open, and July we're going to announce later because somebody has work to do that guy over there. Uh, <clears throat> so this is about 20 I stories. got surprised. <laughs> <laughs> that is not, not a, a surprise. surprise. <laughs> not a surprise. <laughs> that one is not a surprise. So as, as Cedar said, that's that's the general rundown. We'll post a list of all of the descriptions, all of the open, close, contract dates, and publication dates for each one of those. Because we don't believe in not telling people when things that they're going to get their contract and when it's going to get published. So Also, when we put, when this goes up, uh, links up on uh, North Texas Troublemakers. I'm going to go in the comments and I'm going to link people. If I link you, it means I really, really want a story from you. <laughs> We're also putting it on Racketeer Press Facebook page mm -hmm. and other places shortly. Shortly. Um, you can consider that a hint. <laughs> yes, all stories, five to eight thousand words, must be entertaining, all else negotiable. Um, we use PubShare for publication of all of our anthologies. If you're familiar with that, all those details will be on the page so you can see that. Um, and so have fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Have fun. Have fun. Get paid. Have fun. Get paid. That's what we're about. The other thing we're going to do is I have this lovely, lovely thing I'm going to give you guys in a PDF form, which has all, you probably can't see it from there, but it has all the things, all when it opens, closes, and publication date. So you can put it above your desk and write a story for every single one. Yep. 
And you have your deadlines. And you have your deadlines. You can just put them up there and know. So. Whoosh. <laughs> yeah, that's the habit you have. Yeah. Cool. Deadlines do not get to go whooshing past here. No. Um, if you miss a deadline, but guess what? There's probably another one coming. Yes. Yes. Do not despair. Do not despair. Keep writing. If, keep writing. if you've missed a deadline, keep writing. There'll be another one. Mm -hmm. We're all going to Space Cowboy 6, for God's sake. There'll yeah. be another one. Mm. Well, yeah, just because we don't see a reason not to publish a story that's great, because mm -hmm. we can. I like and to we, make money. Yeah, we want you to make money. We want you to have fun. Get paid. Sounds good. All right, hopefully that's clear. Everyone's... Yep. Yeah, it's mud. So, <laughs> well, we'll if, if anyone comments on this video, we will be monitoring the comments and we'll be happy to answer your questions. Mm -hmm. And you can find us in all the usual places as well. Yes, yes. all of this, the, the whole call will be posted on modernfiles.com, the Racketeer Press uh, Facebook page. Um, we have a couple other places that are coming that will be posted, but we'll keep putting them out there so you guys can see them and know, mm -hmm. okay? But this will be repeated, so yes. don't worry. If you yeah. miss it the first time, we will tell you again. Yep. And, and again. And again. And again. And again. <laughs> and again. So here's to an interesting 2024. Oh, and please, if you see this and you're interested, pass it along to your author friends. Yes. yes. If we mention anything that you know someone would be interested in, pass Share it along. It. We are all about meeting new people and meeting new authors and reading fantastic stories. All of these anthologies are open calls. We don't do invitations. Yeah, no. uh, if you're waiting for an invitation, yeah. I am up to my gonads and gators right now. I don't have time to issue invitations. If you see something you like, I don't care who you are, send us a story. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if you want to send us a story, um, you send it to rackpresssubmissions at gmail.com and we'll note that at the bottom of this video so you guys know where to send stuff. Yes. And it's not complex. 12 point Times New Roman. Uh, yeah, 12 point, ti 12 point font Times New Roman. Put uh, your name on there so we can pay you. And your email. <laughs> so we can talk to you and send you a contract. Yes. And don't use Mongolian yak herder format. <laughs> DocX. DocX. Doc Doc, 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 if you have to, but DocX, please. Uh, it works best with my computers and all of the files we use. Yes. It does. 12 point time zero in the whole document. Don't make the title big and fancy. Mm. Don't make my, my work harder. So, and what we should have done at the beginning, for those of you who have no idea who we are, that's Law Dog over there, <laughs> also known as Ian, also stands out front and looks pretty. This is Cedar Sanderson, who's been making all of our incredible covers. And, uh, doing amazing work. She's Rap Press Design at gmail.com. Jonna Hayden, Not who's our production manager. Yeah, and I'm, I'm the cat herder. Cat herder, and she who makes them wear pants. Yes. And Courtney. Pants are overrated. <laughs> <laughs> Highly overrated. <laughs> <laughs> More fun without them. Okay, kills. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Courtney. Uh, I write as C.D. Walter. My uh, Everything is edited, edited by C.D. Walter. That's me. Um, I'm the person who reads your stories, gets the final say on your stories, um, and and just enjoys the heck out of out of all of this. I've been utterly delighted by by some of the fun we've had with all this. So okay then, share so, this video. Yes. Yes. share it, share it, and share it again. And share it again. Uh, and if you have any questions, rackpresseditor at gmail.com is my email. Mm -hmm. so. Or North Texas Trollmakers on Facebook, or Rackinger Press on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Pop in, ask us questions. We're happy to help. So there you go. Thanks for checking in with us. And 24 we'll and 24. 24 and 24.